So, all right, uh, I'm streamed for like one hour and maybe I'm gonna stream a little bit more. Uh, right, uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna include that in the final video, but I have an interesting idea. Right, I will need some sort of a thumbnail for the video that I just recorded, right? So, and the, you know, the topic around the thumbnail is gonna be me rising like Temple OS. So, uh, and essentially what I wanna do, I wanna take the uh, classical logo uh, of Temple OS, right? Uh, Temple OS logo, right? So here's a classical logo of Temple OS. And does anyone know What's the name of the program within the Temple OS that actually displays that logo? Does anyone know? Because I tried to find that uh, that program and I couldn't find it. Uh, so, because in some of the videos you can find this logo being animated and shit, and does it still exist within the Temple OS? Um, to be fair, I kind of... Maybe, maybe it doesn't matter, so... Yeah, essentially what I want to do, these are the default colors that are used by Temple OS. These are default colors. Uh, what I want to do, I want to write a simple program that takes this PNG image and replaces the colors, the default colors, with the groove bo uh, Groovebox colors in my Temple OS installation, making this logo stylized as a Groovebox. So then I could use that in the uh, thumbnail, like indicating that it sort of writes this uh, Temple OS thingy. So you see what I'm talking about? Uh, so this is what I want to do. Um, should be relatively straightforward. So essentially my idea is I'm going to write like a, a simple C program with STB image that loads up this image and then iterates through each individual pixel and depending on the color of the pixel replaces it with the groove box uh, style theme. So, and I might as well actually stream developing that program. Uh, so, because it's actually a pretty straightforward program, right? So, yeah. Uh, let me update maybe the title. So I'm gonna remove um, maybe the thing from here, um, right. <clears throat> so uh, let's go, Uvu. Um, two, 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 two. I'm going to remove that and I'm going to close my uh, QEMA and stuff like that. And uh, so how should I call that? Temple uh, OS. Uh, let's call it like Logo Riser, right? So this is going to be Logo Riser and I'm going to download the logo in here, right? So here is the download of the logo and let's actually create a simple C program. We're not going to be using Holy C because Holy C doesn't really work. In uh, in Linux, right? So there's no there's no standalone Holy C compiler, and uh, I was thinking maybe there is a way to sort of extract Holy C compiler out of the Temple OS, but then I thought that the Holy C compiler is probably tightly integrated with the operating system itself. It's probably the part of the operating system, so I don't think it's going to be that easy to do that. But uh, I don't know. So I never tried that though. So let's actually go ahead and just include this entire thing. Mm, 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 mm. So, and uh, let's do it like that. And maybe I'm going to also do it like this. And let's write a simple hello world. Mm, let's write a simple hello world. So maybe I need to like actually update the title saying something. Um, I don't know what to say. Uh, image uh, processing in pure C, right? So this is what we're doing right now. We're doing image processing in pure C, uh, which is fair enough. Mm, build SH. Maybe port TCC to Temple OS. Uh, TCC is actually quite huge compared to the size of the Temple OS. Believe it or not, Temple OS is extremely small. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty convinced that Temple OS, in terms of lines of code, is smaller than TCC. But I never actually confirmed that, so I'm pretty sure it's very, very small. Because there's not that much stuff in Temple OS. 2 megabytes. 82k uh, uh, lines of code. We can always check that, I think. So you can basically go into the TCC. I think I still have TCC somewhere. Uh, all right, so there's a TCC. Oh yeah, I still have my experiments from from TCC curl. Yeah, so here is the here's the source code of this thing. And if I do clock on tiny C, so let's actually confirm that claim. 
Uh, right, so how many lines of code we have? Uh, well, they're about the same, I would say, then. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, TCC is as big as the Temple OS, then. If they claim that 82k uh, lines of code in uh, Temple OS is true, that means it's as big as Temple OS. So, basically, by porting Tiny C to Temple OS, you're adding another Temple OS to Temple OS. Like, I don't know. <clears throat> mm -mm. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so let's do uh, bin uh, eh? sh. I just wanted to do sh. Okay, so we need to compile a simple C program, chat. We need to compile a very simple C program. So, uh, C flags. Okay, so some people quite often ask me, why do I compile my C programs with CC? Uh, right, so let me actually show you. Uh, did I, do I have it saved somewhere? So, I'm in AOC, so let me actually go to the uh, riser, uh, logo riser. Um, so, the reason why I'm using CC is, I believe the command CC is part of the POSIX standard. I believe so. But I never actually confirmed that. But for some reason, my brain thinks that it's part of the POSIX standard. So, I believe if you have a shell script that uses CC instead of GCC or Clang, that shell script is gonna be uh, is gonna work on any POSIX system that is POSIX compliant. And what's interesting is that the command CC usually exists on all of the Unix like POSIX operating systems, and it's basically a sim link to their native C compiler. Right on Linux is gonna be either GCC or Clang. On macOS is gonna be always Clang, and you can always confirm that. Like if you have a macOS, do you have a CC command? You probably do. If you're on Linux, do you have a CC command? You probably do. If you're on FreeBSD, do you have a CC command? You probably do. So essentially, if you write a shell script that uses CC, that shell script is probably going to work on Linux, FreeBSD, and macOS. You see, so it makes it your shell script more cross-platform. Like a sage, right, 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 right. So it's basically like a sage. So it's a way to make your script more uh, cross-platform in a sense, right? So you not, not necessarily have to do that, uh, right, but it may. So there's no CC on Arch. Very well then. But it sort of get that into a habit. I'm not claiming that it will 100% make it more cross-platform, but that's what I just put into my habits. And that's basically the reason. Because people keep asking, what, what the fuck is CC? And I just wanted to explain. Uh, so, yeah. Arch Linux is not POSIX compliant. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's actually enable a couple of flags. Uh, but I'm not sure if CC is part of the POSIX, right? POSIX CC. Is it part of the POSIX? I think it is. Look at that. Uh, all right. So, yes, yeah, CC is POSIX. Oh, okay, we found we found the same link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so here, here is the link. Might as well, by the way, uh, just put it into the description. Uh, right, so description. And this one is going to be AOC. Uh, seven, right, so, and another description, it's going to be MD, uh, right, um, so I'm going to put it in here, so this is going to be reference, so that means, technically, uh, if you have a script that uses CC, that specific command is probably going to work on all of the POSIX compliant operating systems, so, mm -mm -mm -mm. okay, and Arch is not POSIX compliant, how about that, <laughs> by the way, uh, so, uh, I also want to enable shadow, and uh, so the next thing I want to do, I want to enable the standard C11, and I want to be very pedantic about it, and I'm also going to enable the uh, debug symbols, right? So, CC, uh, C flags, uh, and then we're going to have something like logo risa, uh, main.c, and do I need any... Any libraries? I didn't think I need any libraries, so let's actually enable the tracing and the errors, and then uh, I'm gonna basically 
uh, make this script executable, right? And if I run this entire thing like that, so it actually compiled the final scene thing, logo riser. And the logo riser says, hello world, just a second. Uh, let me try to run this thing one more time. So here it is, it says, hello world. So the first thing we're gonna use, we're gonna uh, add a STB image library, right? To be able to load that image, uh, right? So nothing's uh, STB, I think this is where it is. Right, so we're gonna be using STB image. If you never heard uh, about STB libraries, I really recommend to check them out. You can find them here. I'm gonna copy paste that in the chat. And for people who's watching on YouTube, I'm gonna put that in the description as well. Uh, right, so they're basically like a single header libraries, right? So this is a bunch of headers and each header is essentially the whole library. So the whole library here, uh, a single file, right, without any third party dependencies, uh, it can load PNG, uh, JPEG, BMP, TJ, PSD, GIF, HDR, PIC, PNIM, whatever, like all of these files, a single file. And that file actually not, not just header, it's actually header plus C file, right? So we'll get to that in a minute. And it's actually relatively huge. Uh, so it's 8,000 lines, but it's actually relatively small for what you get. Because for 8,000 lines, you get an ability to parse and read all of these fair formats, right? So it, it doesn't really fit into all of the possible use cases, by the way. Uh, so it fits into the use case of, I, I'll give you the path to the file, to the image file. Give me the bits of the, of the pixels of that file back. So that's the only use case it's useful for. There are other use cases for PNG, for instance, right? So PNG can be, as far as I know, it was also designed to be streamed over the network, right? So the browsers can actually uh, sort of display PNG progressively, right? And to do this kind of stuff, uh, this library probably is not gonna fit uh, for, for this kind of stuff. So for that, you probably wanna use something like libpng or whatnot, uh, right? So there's a lot of limitations uh, to this library and uh, a lot of corners were cut. Uh, right, but if you just have a file and you just want to get the bits of the pixels of that file, uh, you can do that with a single function from this library. So, yeah. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and uh, download this entire thing. Uh, and that's precisely what I need right now. So I just need to load the file and process it and maybe save it back. Uh, by the way, for saving back, we'll need another library. So this library can only read the files. It can't write them. It can only read them. So for writing them, there is a separate library called STB image write. And it's another several thousands of lines of code. Uh, right. But you can at least choose. Sometimes you don't need to write anything. Sometimes you only need to read. And in that case, it's fine. Right. So you can choose whether you want to read images or write images. Makes sense, I think. Um, anyway. So main.c, main.c. So let me actually double you get uh, this entire thing and I'm gonna just download this stuff. Okay. So, and the way it works, right? So you just include it, right? You just include it. It's gonna be stb uh, image.h and there we go, you have the library. But what's interesting is that by default, this file acts like a header and header completes, uh, contains only declarations. It doesn't have implementations, right? If you wanna include also implementations, you have to tell that file by defining stb image uh, implementation. So, and that way, the stb image will act both as header and as a C file, and it will automatically link into your program. So your, uh, your program automatically linked with this stb image and you can already use it and you can already read the, uh, the file. Uh, right, so let's actually take a look at this TB image and the way you read it, uh, you actually do stbi load, right? And that's it, you provide the file name, then the pointers to the X and Y variable, the, which uh, will now contain the size of the image. And then N will contain the amount of components, right? How many components it has, like uh, one, two, three, or four, like RGB, or it's a grayscale or something like that. And the last zero, I don't remember what it is, <laughs> to be fair. I think it's desired channel. So it can actually convert uh, the final thing for you. Uh, for example, if the image is uh, like has three channels, but you want four, you can actually put four in here and it will just give you four. Anyway, so we're going to just copy paste this entire thing and we're going to just put that in here. 
So, and data will contain the, the pixels. And file name, uh, right, file name is going to be equal to the file name in here. So, temple OS logo. Right, this is a temple OS logo. And in here, to be fair, I don't really care about the amount of components uh, that is in the file, but I want to have four of them. So, I'm going to put four in here and I'm going to put null in here. Uh, right, so, and if data became null, uh, that means there was an error while trying to read this entire thing, and we need to report that. We're going to say something like uh, std error, uh, error could not read uh, file, and we can provide this thing in here, All right, so, uh, and this is going to be file name, I suppose, and then I'm going to just exit with non-zero exit code, there we go. Uh, okay, so, and then we can print, uh, print some parameters of the file, right, so uh, red file s, uh, right, so this is going to be file name, uh, and then we can say the width, uh, maybe the size, is uh, 0x, 0% d, x% percent d, right. Uh, Militab, thank you so much for... Hello, hello. Thank you so much for three months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to Epic uh, Holy C Club, but we're programming just a regular C, but welcome to our C Club, right? So today we are C Club. Uh, okay, so if I try to compile this entire thing, this entire thing will take a little bit of time to compile. Okay, this one is interesting. So it fails on link stage saying that it doesn't have a Poe function. And this is a function from the math library. So what we have to do, we have to actually link with the math library. So it's going to be lips minus lm, and I'm going to do something like this. And hopefully uh, now this entire thing will compile. Okay, so that's compiled. And now if I do logo riser, as you can see, we managed to load Temple OS logo, and its size is 650 by 490. Right, so we managed to determine this size. So we possess the pixels of the image, and if we take a look at the actual size in here, it is, as you can see, correct, right? So it is correct size. It's also 8-bit color, RGBA, not interlaced. Okay. So, and you see how easy it is? Like, we, we just slapped some additional file into the program, and we're able to read uh, the pixels of that image. Isn't that freaking cool? I think it's fucking cool. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Why use a script instead of a make files? Because make files are annoying. Um, especially uh, make utilities, I would say, and specifically GNU make. Uh, GNU make does a very scummy thing. Uh, it basically adds sneakily uh, a lot of GNU extensions that are not standard. And it is very diff very easy to forget which extension is, um, you know, standard or not. So you end up writing like a make file that may not work on other POSIX compliant operating system like FreeBSD or, um, or Mac OS. So because of that, I just tend to write like a shell script, uh, you know, bare POSIX compliant shell script. And that way I minimize the probability of writing something that is not going to be POSIX compliant basically the only reason. Apart from that, I wish I could use make files. They're kind of convenient, I think. Uh, the entire paradigm of make files is rather convenient, but they're annoying. They're very, very annoying. Mm, two, 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 two. But it's just like a force of a habit. Again, so it's not like a, something that I have a very strong opinion on. It's just like, yeah, whatever, doesn't matter. The color of the bike shirt is going to be red. Okay. So let's continue. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Uh, so now, uh, what I want to do, I want to actually iterate through all of the pixels of the, um, of the image and see, like build a histogram of, of the pixels, if you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, so just to see how many of certain colors we have. Uh, so one of the things I want to probably do is to cast this entire stuff into uint32 because uh, I converted this image into like four channel image, uh, four chan image. Uh, so this is going to be int and this is going to be probably leap. Uh, just in case, and I'm going to explicitly just convert it to that. Okay, so uh, let me think. Mm -mm. I'm going to iterate um, 
Oh god, I didn't have to define this I at the beginning of this section in here. Oh my god, thank you so much. Oh, I've been programming in Holy C for so long, I forgot that I can just do that in, in a regular C. This is so useful. Uh, because quite often when you write for loops, you want to have like a throwaway I variable, right? So you don't want to like declare it in some section or something like that. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to do something like this, right? And uh, now, uh, what I want to do, I want to take the pixel in here and uh, add this pixel to histogram. Histogram uh, add, All right, so I will just add it like that. Uh, and then after that, we can print like how many of certain colors do we have, right? So uh, let me see, uh, let's define something like histogram, uh, histogram. Uh, capacity, let's define, I don't know, around, so it's supposed to be 16 colors, right? If everything's correct, we only should see 16 colors in here, uh, right? So, and uh, what we're going to have here, we're going to have like a very simple associative array, linear associative array, because I don't expect too many colors in there, so it's fine, we don't need any hash table. Uh, right, so histogram, uh, it's more of a, like a cell. Um, Let's call it something like color frequency, right? So, and in here we're going to have the color and then the frequency of that color, basically the count, right? So, and then the histogram is going is to be basically an array of color frequencies. Uh, histogram, and then it's going to have a capacity of, uh, of this uh, thing. And then I'm going to do histogram uh, size, right? And there we go. So we've got something like this, and I want to implement this function super quick, uh, right? I want to implement this function super quick. So in here, we're going to accept uh, 32 pixel and essentially, uh, right. First, we want to check something. I want to assert that histogram SZ is less than histogram capacity, right? So we don't overflow this specific capacity, which will probably require include assert.h. Uh, right. So then, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to iterate uh, through this entire thing and size i uh, less than histogram sz, right, plus plus i. And if uh, histogram i uh, color is equal to the pixel that we're trying to add, uh, maybe I'm going to actually call it a color as well, just in case, right? If that's the color that we're trying to add, we're going to simply increment its count, right, we're going to increment its count and quit the entire loop, right, so we're essentially quitting everything. If we went through this entire loop and we didn't find anything, okay, so this is maybe a place where we have to check that. So that means we have to add a new color and we're adding on that on the color if we didn't find anything uh, existing in the histogram. So we're going to do it like this, a histogram, uh, histogram size, uh, right, the color is going to be equal to the color and the count uh, is going to be equal to one and then I just increment the histogram size. Uh, there we go. So that's how we're going to do that. Um, all right, so and after that uh, I'm going to iterate through all of the um, values in the histogram uh, and I'm going to print all of them. So essentially we're going to have the following thing. Uh, so we need to uh, print them as a hexadecimal value, so it's going to be x. But I also want to pad them with zeros to, um, I don't know how many of them, uh, four? No, not four, eight. Right, so because I have four channels and two characters per channel, so that means I have uh, eight characters total, so that's basically the color. And then uh, I'm going to have like a count of these colors. So histogram uh, i, histogram uh, actually, you know, color, uh, I uh, count, right, so this is going to be the count. All right, so after that, if I, um, you know, recompile everything, so let's actually uh, do build.sh, I think I didn't make any mistakes, and then if I uh, run logo riser, there we go. So these is these are the colors that we have in the entire image. So we only have, uh, let me see, we only have seven colors right now in the image. Right. So, and this is the, how many of the pixels of that color we have. So, uh, and essentially now we need to replace these colors with the corresponding colors from the groove box. Right. Uh, to, 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 to. 
that's basically what we're doing. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, okay, so, but we need to know what color, which color in a groove box it corresponds to. Seven colors and seven day of Holy See, uh, AOC, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so to do that, we need to have um, this standard, the standard palette, right? So we need to find these colors in the standard palette, and then in the corresponding groove box palette, we, we need to find the replacement, right? So this is essentially what we have to do. All right, let's actually go ahead and grab the standard palette. Uh, though I do have the groove bo box palette already, right? So I have a groove box palette. Uh, right, so let me, let me see, it's sodium, um, AOC, it's located in the Vim, right? So here is the groove box palette. Uh, the colors, the palette colors in Temple OS are extremely weird. There are 48-bit colors. Have you ever seen anything like that? 48-bit colors. I've never seen anything like that, it's kind of weird. Uh, so, yeah, but these are the corresponding, like, values and stuff like that. And what's interesting is that this color, this color, corresponds to just this. So, you take, you remove this thing, uh, so you can actually basically see the components. So, these are the components. Uh, red, green, and blue. And, uh, they basically correspond to just this. Serious, I'm not joking. I have no idea why it is like that. Don't ask me. I don't have a divine intellect to explain why it is like that, but it is in fact like that. So, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. So, yeah. So, this is the Groove Box palette. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do in here, so uh, I can probably replace it with just like uint64t. Uh, so this is gonna group box palette. I know that the coral color num in Temple OS is defined as 16, uh, right? So I'm gonna keep it in here. But now I need a palette uh, that is the standard palette of Temple OS, right? So uh, let me basically super quickly load up the Temple OS, right? And just grab the standard palette. Uh, all right, so uh, let me run AOC 2021. All right. mm -mm -mm. Are these floating points? No, 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 they are integers. Uh, they are straight up integers. Trust me. Uh, okay, so let me uh, see. GR pilot STD. Okay, so if we jump there, uh, I couldn't for some reason jump there. I forgot how to jump. Uh, I think there. Okay, so jar palette. Yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna disable this thing and fuck. One more time. Uh huh. All right. So this is the palette. This is the standard palette, and uh, so the color is CBGR48. CBGR48. And we can take a look at the definition of this thing. So we can jump to this definition. Uh, and essentially, it's a class, uh, right? So maybe I can even. Uh, zoom in a little bit, right? So it's a class, uh, right, that has eight 16 bit uh, variables in here B, G, R, and some sort of a padding. So this is how Temple OS stores the values um, for, for palettes and stuff like that. Mm, 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 mm. So. so, but here I'm more interested in the standard palette. So here is the standard palette that I'm going to copy paste, uh, right, and I'm going to just basically create a file somewhere in home, uh, right, so let's call it like std palette, uh, so txt, uh, and I'm going to simply copy paste this thing in here and I'm going to just save it, right, I'm going to save it, uh, maybe I also want to exit this entire stuff and quit QEMA. So then I want to mount the AOC uh, virtual machine, right? So that will allow me to go in here, MNT, home, uh -huh, STD palette, and here is the standard palette uh, that they can extract from Temple S. Though, I mean, I could have like take it from the source code, but I don't didn't know where it is located. So I used like a search facilities of Temple OS to actually find uh, find this entire thing. Okay, so we've got something like this, right? We've got something like this. And the interesting part in here is that 
Uh, what's the format we use in in a file? <laughs> because I'm not sure. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of weird, but yeah, you in 64t, so we don't have public, uh, right? So this why do I keep this thing public? It shouldn't be public. There we go. So we don't have a public keyword in here. Uh, all right. So if I try to compile this into, I think uh, I can try to run build sh and then logo risa. Uh, okay, so it still works. So we can try to figure out the format. Uh, we can try to figure out the format by looking at this thing, right? This thing is rather, uh, rather interesting. So I can clearly see that probably the first letter here is the um, alphanumeric, right? It is alphanumeric. Uh, cyan. So the cyan, I forgot what is a cyan, right? So it's a mix of which things uh red green um so rgb cyan uh not cyan i keep forgetting uh, so it's a green and blue okay so this is a green and this is blue so i suppose it's alpha um right this is red uh a a b g r so that's probably what it is <laughs> So it's probably A, B, G, R. Uh, it's definitely cyan, right? So because it's the biggest, uh, uh, you know, biggest count. And if you take a look at the image in here, all right, so as you can see, the, the biggest color here is a cyan, definitely, 100%. So it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. So we need some sort of a function that takes C something whatever the template OS calls it I, I forgot what is what is it called but uh, so vim uh, txt uh, cbgr48 right so take cbgr48 and converts it to a burger <laughs> yes it's a, it's a burger format uh, right mm -mm. you can probably use the emacs magic to edit the colors directly I guess I guess I could probably uh, but yeah it's a good idea but i, I think i want to make a small break before i will try to execute that epic magic uh because i need to refill my water and stuff like that so yeah let's make a small break and then we're gonna execute the magic uh all right i have an idea i think i'm not going to use emacs magic because uh it will permanently change the values of the things and i, I might want to actually experiment with the with the colors right with the conversions between uh between different formats so i'm gonna write like a function that accepts cbgr whatever the fuck it is uh yeah cbgr 48 and converts it to uh the rgb or whatnot uh right and then we're gonna use that function to compare things uh, around so that way i'll be able to like play and see what kind of conversions is going to be um, you know better so it's actually very cool so we can clearly see that uh it's padded with like fives uh right so which means that we're on the right path because the uh thing here also has like five uh like some sort of buffer right so it's not straight up zero uh but it's like yeah it's it's like but it with fives and in a standard uh, thing here it's also the same all right so what i want to do i want to have a function that uh, takes something like uh cbgr48 to uh i don't know rgba32 right uh and in here we're going to return uh u32 and here we're going to accept u64 uh, right so this is going to be the core and this thing is supposed to uh produce a conversion of some sort right so this thing is not implemented yet uh, right, not implemented um, yet. Right, and the way I want to actually do uh, things is I want to have a function that accepts the pointer to the to the palette, and uh, then the caller uh, in uh, RGB32, and then just uses the function and searches for it. By the way, I, I might as well actually say what. Okay, I have an idea. We need. Uh, some sort of like type defs to indicate what are the types, right? So I'm gonna uh, define type def 
so U in 64, and this one is going to be C B G R uh, 48, right? And then we're going to define something like U in 32, and this one is going to be R G B A 32, right? And we're going to use this type devs as a means of documenting which uh, like color format we're using in here. Uh, so C B G R 48, right? C B G R 48. Uh, CBGR48, and in here we return RGBA32, and here we accept uh, CBGR48 as well. Right, so another interesting thing is that um, Temple OS is using a very cool trick. Uh, let me actually show you. It uses a very cool trick when it comes to parsing this kind of stuff. Uh, CBGR, uh, okay, so, oh, there's also CBGR24, that's not bad, uh, let's actually jump there, and this is not what I wanted, uh, uh, boom, cool, so I'm gonna disable this entire thing, and I might as well actually go like this, okay, so, you see, class CBGR48, it defines it as a structure, and there is, like, a four fields in here, but it also says i64 class it's a very interesting feature of temple os which essentially tells you that cbgr48 is a structure with these fields and you can access those fields separately but at the same time it acts like a 64-bit integer you can use uh, bit operations on that type you can do uh, add operations subtract and stuff like that it acts like i64 but at any point you can access the parts of that number as fields of the structure you see uh, what what there is doing this is actually pretty cool uh it's actually super useful um so and what i'm thinking is that maybe i'm going to define cbgr48 as a structure with uh you know four fields and that will help me to parse this thing a little bit easier right i think we can give it a try so yeah uh though I, i'm not sure right so yeah i can define a structure and then i can take u64 like u in 64 t and cast that thing there as a union, uh, but as a union, I still will have to do some shit in there, but we can do, try to do it as a union. Why not? Mm -mm -mm. But when it comes to union, it's kind of like... Eh. Yeah, I think it's not as convenient in C as it is convenient in Holy C. In Holy C, it's actually pretty straightforward. Furthermore, uh, furthermore, I-64 is a class as well. Right, it is a class as well, and I think we discussed that in the uh, in the previous like sessions and whatnot. Uh, so it's a union which allows you to basically ac uh, access different parts of I64 uh, through arrays of smaller types. Right, you can take I64 and look at it as an array of bytes of eight bytes or four words or two 32s. Right, so you can just like go ahead and use it like that. Uh, which is cool. And I think we used it in uh, Advent of Cost Solution at some point, so that was actually very, very cool. Mm, man, this color theme actually makes Temple OS much better. To be fair, I feel like people would take Terry a little bit more serious if Temple OS had a good readable color theme. <laughs> right. It is kind of weird, because I actually experienced that on myself. Right, so the first reaction of people who see Temple OS for the first time is like, what the fuck is that? Go the fuck away from me. Right, and they never even look into that thing any further. Right, so it's like literally their first reaction. They see this color theme and it's just like, no, put it away from me. I don't want to even look at that. And they never look into that and it never got the recognition that it actually deserves. And if Terry would have put a little bit more... Uh, effort into the cover of his book because people still judge uh, the book by its cover no matter what you say no matter how you wishful think uh, people still judge the book by the cover right and if he put a little bit more effort into the cover maybe it would have gotten a little bit more recognition as sad as it is but, but it is true right it is freaking true so people just don't take Temple OS seriously because of 
It's a horrible coral game. Um, <clears throat> Other than no inline variables, I think Holy C is actually a great language. I don't think so. It doesn't have a type checking. Uh, I would rather prefer having type checking than inline variables, whatever it is. <laughs> so essentially, I was thinking about that for some time. The saying that don't judge a book by its cover is basically saying that great authors suck at marketing. <laughs> That's basically what it means. The great book authors of all time fucking suck at marketing. Holy shit. Right, they can write a great book, but they can't put any effort into making a great cover. Like, like even slightest, even just like a little bit, just like two colors that match together. No, they're incapable of doing that. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, who needs a type checker when you have a divine intellect? True. Um, uh, engineers can't make good-looking things. I know from myself, our doings just work. It doesn't need to be good-looking. And it's, to be fair, it is not that difficult to make something that looks decent. Just take two colors that complement each other and just put them around. And that already looks better than random stuff people come up with. Right, just Google up what are the complementing colors. And there's a lot of like, uh, you know, color palette generators these days. Right, go and just like Google color palette generator and generate some colors that complement each other and use that. And that's already will look great. Right, so you don't even need to put too much effort in 2021 to, to make uh, look something good. I think there's a thing called coolers. Uh, um, palette generator. Um, coolers, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can use something like coolers. Uh, so I'm gonna actually put this thing in the description as well. So, uh, howdy. Howdy, feller. All right, so start the generator. Uh, Start degenerator. <laughs> I'm sorry. Modern website. Look at that. At least it looks good. So, uh, okay. So, uh, okay. I'm gonna, not going to look at that. So, I suppose you press space and it generates like a new color scheme every time. Right. If you like any particular color, right. Let's say that I like this color, right. Uh, and then I can say lock it. And it will, uh, you can uh, keep generating with the space and it will not change that color, but it will try to make sure that these colors match with this one. So, and you can just like randomly generate shit until you find the color that you like, then lock it and then continue generating and so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, you can at least use that, um, right? Five seconds to load color combination. I mean, I'm also streaming right now. When I'm streaming, like all of the websites work like twice as slow. Uh, so divide that time by two, <laughs> right? <laughs> Essentially. Uh, I wonder if that's a session. Imagine storing the user session in the uh, in the URL. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm, I'm sure it's not a session. I suppose it's a colors, right? So if I regenerate the color, yeah, yeah so I suppose it's a colors. <laughs> Okay, but it looks like a session or something. Uh, but yeah, nobody does it. I remember there were times when people did that. Uh, yeah, people used to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was it was a thing, but it's so fucking such a huge vulnerability. Um, yeah, especially when you're a streamer. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna put this thing in here. And you don't even need like too many colors, right? If you're making like a I don't know, application that looks like a terminal or something like that. You need two colors, like a background and foreground. So you can just generate two like background, two colors for background and foreground that match together and it will already look all right. So, and maybe find some sort of like a good looking font. Um, just a little bit of effort, just a tiny bit of effort goes like a real long way. Mm. Pure black and white are really harsh, to be fair. They're really, really harsh. Uh, I didn't think you want to use pure black and white. Um, okay. Anyways. 
Uh, so how can I bring it back? So now I need to write like a simple, simple function in here. Right. Uh, two, 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 two. So yeah, we need what? Um, find color. All right. So um, we are going to provide our GBA thirty two color in here, right? Um, Mm -mm. And uh, we're gonna do it like that. So find color, and it's supposed to return an index within that palette, right? So we're gonna actually accept the palette, uh, right? We're accepting the palette, and we're accepting the color. So this is a gr palette. So we're trying to find this color within this palette. That's what we're doing. Uh, okay. So here uh, I can do something like i uh, less than color uh, color num uh, plus plus i, and then if uh, I might as well actually pre-convert this thing cbgr forty eight. Mm -mm -mm. So color cbgr forty eight uh, and um, cbgr forty eight to rgb. Uh, mm. So it's kind of, yeah, so I probably have to do that on each of these things. Okay, so it's going to be GR palette, CBGR48 uh, to RGB equal to color, right? If we found that thing, we just return I. If we went through the entire thing and we found anything, I'm going to return minus one, right? So that's essentially what I want to have in here. So it's okay. Uh, searcher, um, simple searcher within the, within the palette. Uh, if I try to compile this entire thing. Is it going to compile? It does not compile because we haven't used variables and stuff. Uh, well, I mean, it does compile, right? So it's, it's just not finished. Uh, if I try to... Mm, 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 mm. All right. I have an idea, actually. I have an interesting idea. Right. So here is the histogram and we do this thing. Uh, we don't really need histogram anymore. Uh, so I needed a histogram because I wanted to test something. So I might as well just remove it completely because the only thing I need in here is just iterate uh, through this uh, up until this, uh, right? Plus plus i, and I need to find the color. So I need to find the color. So I provide gr palette std, and the color that I'm trying to find is this one, right? And that should give me an index. An interesting thing about the index is that it should never be minus one, right? So otherwise we have incorrect palette. So I'm going to just assert that index is uh, greater or equal than zero, right? After that, I need to find the corresponding index within the groove box palette, right? I'm finding that thing there, and I need to convert it to the 32-bit uh, color, CBGR, 42 to RGB, and I need to reassign it back to our original uh, thing in here. There we go. So this is basically what we're doing. Right, we're finding corresponding color within the palette, and then we're just substituting it with, uh, with this thing. Uh, okay. So can I compile this entire thing? It does in fact compile and uh, all right. So if I try to execute log eraser, it should crash essentially with the assertion saying that this thing is not implemented. So this is basically the only thing we need to implement. We need to implement conversion from the Terry's weird format to uh, something sane. Uh, all right. And furthermore, another thing we want to do, we want to save that thing back. Uh, right, so for that we'll need a library that can save the PNG files. So let's actually find that library. So we can find that in the same repo. Uh, so it's going to be nothings uh, stb. Nothings stb. Uh, singing Mexican, thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate that. Uh, Groovebox theme in Temple OS, yes, uh, we do use Groovebox theme in Temple OS, and it's actually relatively simple to set up. Uh, that's the whole thing. I think I even have a link in the in the project comment. Yeah, there we go. So here is the link uh, in the chat, and this is basically like a holy C code that allows you to set up the um, you know the stuff. Uh, so it basically links you to this file, uh, right? Alrighty, so let me find, uh, yeah, groove box looks pretty good. Mm -mm -mm. STB image right, that's what we need in here. 
stb image right and i'm gonna go in here and just w get like this is not what i wanted to be fair uh huh so w get uh, like this a cool stb image right i'm gonna include uh huh stb image right dot h and we probably also want to do the f uh, the following thing as well uh huh uh, SBGR48 is template specific structure, no information at all. Uh, it is a specific structure. It's a format that is used to store colors within the temple OS. And it basically uses um, 16 bits per channel. It's an RGB uh, with 16 bits per channel. I have no idea why. Seriously, I have no idea why. But it is what it is. Uh, So, uh, yes, so. Uh, maybe it's needed to have more resolution when you do some color operations, right? Like interpolation and whatnot. Maybe for that. Uh, but what's interesting is that it then can be converted down to just uh, 8 bits per channel at some point. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Wasn't CBGR for the histogram in the image you used? No. It was not CBGR. Uh, okay. Let's continue. Uh, so we're going to do that. And after that, I need to actually save this entire thing. So this is going to be right. Uh, STB uh, I uh, write PNG. And uh, there we go. So I have to provide the output file. So this is the input uh, file, file, um, output file name, right? So, and then I can just provide X and Y and uh, might as well actually put it into like comp of some sort, right? Uh, so I can define this thing like this, it's gonna be four. Then I can put comp in here, uh, right? And for the data, right, I can use the data that we've got uh, strident bytes and strident bytes is essentially uh, mm, right. So this is going to be size of u in thirty two t multiplied by x. So that's basically the stride. And then we save this entire thing. But I suppose uh, it may return a failure. If I remember correctly, with the stb libraries, uh, they return zero on failure. Right. I think that's what they do. Uh, yeah. I do not remember. Right. Uh, is it a failure? It's quite unclear. Okay, it looks like a failure. Okay, so the on failure they usually return zero. On a success they return one. So that means I have to do it like this, right? Uh, so this is gonna be F uh, STD error. Uh, could not save file S and uh, output file name and exit with one uh, there we go there we go so a new variable and variable, variable blah 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 uh, what about this one output file name uh, let's actually quickly define this thing in here const char output file name and this one is going to be basically uh, logo um, groove box that's what we're going to call it in here Logo groove box. Uh, okay, so is it going to be working? Okay, so it is doing this kind of stuff. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, let me uh, see. Uh, let me see. So we basically need to start extracting things one by one, right? So first, I would like to extract like R, right? So this is going to be U32. This is going to be R. To extract R, uh, right, I need to shift the current color to the right, uh, right to the right, by five bytes, five. The single byte is eight bits, so I have to multiply it by two, right? So this is basically what I have to do. And that will effectively give me the uh, this stuff. But I also want to mask it, uh, 0xff, right? So there we go, I've got this thing. So this is R. Uh, right, so this is this thing. Um, so then next I need to get this thing, right? So that means I need to shift everything by uh, three bytes, right? So this is going to be three bytes and this is going to be basically G. 
Uh, all right, so this is another one. And in here, the last one is going to be basically by one bytes, which is going to be uh, a blue. Right, so we got R, G, and B. R, G, and B. Now, uh, I know for a fact that we have like an alpha color, which is FF. One, two, one, two, one, two. Right, and now we need to fit uh, these things in here. So I know that R is actually not shifted at all, so I have to do R. Or uh, G, I'm going to assume that G is shifted by uh, one byte, right? So something like this. So it's going to be shifted by one byte and I'm going to wrap everything just in case. Uh, right. And B is going to be shifted by two bytes. Right. So this is my assumption on how it is going to be converted. Right. And uh, let's see if it's going to work or not. So one thing I want to do, by the way, I want to be able, uh, I want to allow the compiler to speed up uh, this entire process. So I'm going to do the following thing. I'm, I'm going to mark all of the global stuff as static because I'm not writing any library anyway, right? So I can just mark everything as static, uh, letting the compiler know that it's not going to be visible outside or anything like that. Uh, all right, uh, static. This one can be static in line. Whether in line actually affects or not, I think I've even made a video where we conducted experiments, but in line does affect uh, things uh, in some situations. So I'm gonna put uh, in line in here, just in case. All right, so this is a static in line. I'm not sure if this one matters. Uh, right. All right, so, and after that, I wanna also uh, do the following thing. I'm gonna add O3. Uh, all three to the to the compilation, right? So it will optimize everything because we're basically working on the level of individual bytes, right? I think optimizing that and like adding maybe vectorization and stuff like that for this stuff is going to be useful. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to try to do uh, build this edge, right? So pass an argument. Uh, okay, so I think there's something weird going on, right? So the conversion. Uh, so this is not JR palette. It has to be JR palette I. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, it takes some time to compile this thing now, as you can see, right? Because it's optimizing not only the uh, my program, it's also optimizing the libraries that it included. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a lot of optimizations it needs to do. But yeah, it, it actually finished relatively quickly. So if I do logo riser, it was relatively quick and the logo riser created a logo groove box. And the question is, is it going to look like a original logo, but groove box? It kind of does, but this doesn't look like a cyan. Uh, or is it? Oh, it does look like a cyan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually made it, uh, I made cyan the aqua. Yeah, yeah, so this is how it looks like now. It looks like shit, by the way. <laughs> mm. But I tried. Uh, I tried. Uh, so that was the original one, and this is the new one. Looks okay, I guess. Uh, I guess it looks okay. Maybe. To some extent. Right, so this is, yeah, I think, I think, I think we actually nailed it. I think we actually nailed it. Uh, right, that's the, the Groovebox logo. Okay. Mm, whether I'm going to use that for the thumbnail, I'm not sure. But that was an interesting exercise nonetheless. Right, so, uh, right. That was an interesting exercise uh, and it's actually super easy to actually like extend that to any palette, right? So you can grab any palette from uh, from Temple OS and you can use it, uh, which is which is kind of cool. Though we can actually mess around uh, with this entire thing. For example, we can swap black and white. I intentionally swapped black and white in the Groovebox Dim to make it like sort of dark. Right, if we do the following thing, maybe I'm not going to actually optimize anything. Uh, maybe <laughs> optimization doesn't really give that much of a boost. Uh, right, so let's give it a try. Build.sh and I'm going to just try to do this thing. Yeah, it didn't actually give any pati uh, particular boost. Uh, right, so if I did... This is not bad, would you look at that? 
Right, so essentially what it did, it inverted back the black and white thing in, so in here specifically. So it looks a little bit closer to the original, uh, kind of. So is that better? Is that better? I think I think it's kind of better. Shiny, it looks shiny in fact. Yes, 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 yes. Much better. And if you compare that with the original uh, Temple S logo, right, so... So it's with the theme applied. To be fair, it looks much better, right? It's like, yeah, again, if Terry spent a little bit more time making the color theme more appealing, maybe people would listen to him. Maybe people would take him a little bit more serious, right? Uh, make the birds feel conception. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, the, the birds actually fit really, really nice. Uh, what is that kerning? <laughs> yeah, the kerning is actually kind of weird on between M and P. I do agree with that. It's kind of, it's kind of sus. Not gonna lie. Is that the same kerning in like an actual Temple OS? So if I type out uh, Temple, it is actually. Look at that. Oh my god. Um, yeah. Uh, shit. It's kind of it's kind of weird. So like I mean MP is just a little bit closer. Um, consistency. Yeah. Speaking of consistency. Mm. Alrighty. So how long is streaming? I already streaming for two hours. I think I'm gonna wrap it up. So I think I did everything I wanted. It looks really nice actually. So just think about it. Huh. Uh. Yeah, maybe I'm gonna tweet it out at some point. Yeah, I'm gonna tweet it out. Uh, I think it's worth tweeting. Uh, wait a second, <laughs> I'm not gonna show it in the stream. Uh, I'm following a couple of artists because I'm into drawing and stuff like that, and they occasionally draw furry stuff, and I don't want to show my Twitter because of that. <laughs> uh, I'm not the furry, I swear. Uh, well, it's not, they are not drawing anything Monk and TOS, but yeah. Uh, apparently, furry stuff is really popular among the artists for whatever reason. I don't mind, I don't care, but people, some people don't like that. Um, Alright, so where is the logo rice? Um, mm -mm -mm. Right, temples. Temple OS uh, logo with groove uh, box palette. Uh, right, I'm gonna actually tweet it out. A Temple OS logo with groove box palette. Uh, all right. So, yeah, I tweeted it out. So, yeah. Give it a like if you want to. Or maybe even retweet. How about that? Uh, all right, so I guess that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really freaking appreciate that. Have a good one and I see you on the next Azuzian session. How about that? And so let's maybe raid somebody. I don't know, we haven't raided anyone for quite some time. So is anyone doing anything epic on this software development section on Twitch? Anything epic? I need something epic to raid. Mm, so did they close everything? I seem okay. Jessica Mack is streaming. She's probably streaming software development. I really hope that she's streaming her game development. Her game is actually absolutely, absolutely amazing. Uh, visually, visually, it's absolutely amazing. I don't know in game design wise because I never played it, but visually, it's absolutely stunning. So let's actually raid her. Uh, raid uh, Jessica Mack. All right. Get ready for the raid, boys and girls. Get ready for the raid. And I see you all next time. Love you. Mwah.